What's up, everybody? Welcome to another edition of Insomniac Live, a special edition, maybe. Um, we are going to be announcing the winners of our PC giveaway uh, today. Um, we'll be doing that a little bit, a little bit later in the stream, not immediately. So you have to stick around for that. Um, but yeah, what are we giving away? If you, if you don't know, um, we are giving away a really, really awesome computer. Uh, have you seen it? I've seen it. It's it's beautiful. It yeah. is. Um, spectacular, even. Yeah. Um, by the way, I'm here with uh, Ch Chad Desern, uh, Chief Creative Officer, uh, and Adam Tr Shremek. Did I say that right? Shremek? Shramek. Shramek. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> does not rhyme with Trebek. It did, does it? Turns it. Out. No. Uh, Adam is a lighting artist and a friend of the stream. Been here a lot. <laughs> yeah. It's been awesome. <laughs> Um, but yeah, what, what are we giving away? We are giving away a, uh, a Intel Core i9-7900 uh, processor. It has a 1080 Founders Edition uh, GeForce uh, graphics card, uh, a Gigabyte X299 uh, Gaming 3 motherboard, um, 16 gigabytes of Corsair Vengeance RAM, um, Western Digital 1 terabyte uh, Hard drive, uh, thermal, thermal take, tough power, grand, 850 watt power supply, uh, a thermal take core P3 cooler, I believe, uh, with Windows 10, obviously. And here is a picture of of the prize. Oh my goodness! <laughs> and that thing Look is, at it. That thing it's, is gorgeous. It's like it came from space. Yeah. In the future. Yep. It's future space. It's so good. Look at those specs. An Intel Core i9, holy cow. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have one of those. No. That's, 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 that's I don't have one of those in my desk those. to do my work. To do yeah. my job. It's like <laughs> crazy future stuff. Wow. Um, but yeah, big thanks to our sponsors, uh, NVIDIA, Intel, Thermaltake, and Corsair um, for helping us do this. We really appreciate it. Um, so thanks to them. Um, so before we get to the giveaway, uh, Let's talk about why why VR. Why uh, what do you need to to uh, get into VR, and why should you get into VR? Um, VR uh, you need a, a decent rig, not, nothing too crazy. You can probably get by with something like a, a 980, a GTX 980, an I, Intel i5, uh, and about 16 gigabytes of RAM. Um, somewhere around there. I think you can go even lower than that, but that's about like you can play most most things out now comfortably around that range. Um, and then why VR? What what makes VR special? Um, why are we in VR? Chad, do you do you have any insights on that? Those those are good questions, Thomas. Thomas. For um <laughs> <laughs> for what for what makes VR special? Um, I, I still remember when we had a. Um, like a Rift DK1 in the office for the first time. That was the very first development kit that they sent out. And by our, our standards now, it was primitive. It was a bit big and unwieldy. Um, it did not look like it was from the future. It looked like it was from uh, like a Mad Max film. Just, uh, you know, cables the everywhere. Future. It, it was like an analog 1980s vision of a, an uncomfortably heavy like thing that you would stick on your head. And, uh, you know, the, the, the resolution wasn't the greatest. It had um, the thing we call the screen door effect, where you could see, um, you know, not, not pixels that, that blur together in a butterly smooth and vibrant fashion, mm -hmm. but just like giant grid lines in between everything, as if you're peering through grandma's screen door the whole time you're trying <laughs> to immerse yourself in a world. Uh, so, but, but despite all that, you know, we put the thing on and we could all just see it right away. We, we had people gathered around to try this thing here in the office, like a bunch of, uh, you know, like, like jaded game developers. You know, we, 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 think, we think we've seen a lot, but this thing kind of blew our minds. Like right mm -hmm. away, we felt like we were in a space. Latency was good enough where you could look around and, and not feel weird. Um, you know, we, we think about building worlds all the time that surround the player. You know, here you could you could really feel like the thing was all around you. Um, you could walk up to an object and get really close to it. Mm -hmm. Things that seem obvious because we navigate them in the real world suddenly uh, could, you know, could just work in this new medium. And we, we all saw it right away and got excited about it. Because uh, as, as developers, you know, we, we, we build worlds, uh, we tell stories, 
and we create uh, mechanics, interactions. And, and, and here was this thing that was at the center of all of those that had a ton of um, unexplored terrain for all of those things. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when we make a console game, we, we, we have a lot to figure out every time. It's always a challenge. Making games is just hard. But um, we have kind of a bag of tricks that we reach for. Like, we, we have a, a pretty reasonable idea of structure for storytelling. We understand a little bit about how to build worlds, like starting with nothing and then building over time. Um, we, we know what mechanics have worked out of trial and error. But, you know, suddenly we're in this space in VR where we don't really know any of that. And that's a really exciting place for us to be as game developers. Um, that feeling of uncertainty, like we've got to figure this out from the ground up and just make something awesome that we'd all want to play. Um, and, and, you know, since then, a lot of us have stuck with it as players as well. Like, um, it, the, the, the evolution has been amazing over the past couple years. I mean, it, it's, it's almost easy to take it for granted because things have gotten so good so fast. But, you know, now there are games out there like, well, I mean, super hot VR, like we're playing today. Yeah. Here's this experience where you feel like you're in control of the speed of time around you and you're, you're moving in space and dodging in a way yeah. that you haven't really in games before. <laughs> I mean, that, 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 that's so cool. This is all new stuff. Or a game like From Other Suns that I spent time with recently, like, here's, here's a basically FTL, like Faster Than Light, where you've got to manage your ship's resources, but you're doing it on a ship where you can walk from room to room and actually mm -hmm. deal with aliens as they board you. You, you. you can't get that kind of experience anywhere else. I mean, yeah. I, I, I don't see this trajectory where um, everything is all VR all the time, but I do see a trajectory where it's got a place in everybody's living room, and it's one other way to experience worlds that us and other developers are building and that's 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 pretty exciting yeah for me kind of the first the first oh wow this is something new moment was actually when i played edge of nowhere uh and i i i, I think the ground felt was falling out or something but it basically i i just got this like i'm not that i'm not afraid of heights but i definitely uh, when the ground fell out and you could kind of see over it, I got this sense of like, oh, like kind of nervous. And it was just like, wow, I've never really felt that before. <laughs> Almost a, a Vertigo-esque uh, feeling in a game. Um, and it kind of made me realize how it, it, it's kind of tricking your mind into to thinking like this this is uh, sort of real. Or, yeah. or that, that's, uh, it, that's it. I mean, you, you have these, these real feelings of navigating a space. And then the social stuff was a surprise to us as well. Like, I still remember the very first time we got the Unspoken working with a networked game. And you could look out and see another person and actually see their, their head and hands that were tracked. Um, I, I could feel Casey, who I was, like, playing the maybe the first competitive match <laughs> with, like, like, look out from behind cover at me right. and, like, wave. But then he also gave me a dirty look. And, like, I could feel all of that. That, that was super weird. Like... Yeah. Um, so, something that we could not have expected when we got into it. And there, there have been a ton of things like that, like in the unspoken. You know, we, we never knew that um, kind of managing your perception would be part of gameplay. You know, when, when, when you're playing the game, yeah. spells come from all over. Some of them are like, you know, spells that, that, that track their homing spells. You got to keep your eye on them. Um, it, it turns out like great players can kind of manage the inputs from that stuff and understand where to prioritize. I mean, that, that that's new. Like when it's uh, when it's a console game or a traditional PC game and it's there on a screen, um, you know, you, you, you can get overwhelmed by clutter, but it doesn't feel like a fun thing to do. Like in yeah. VR, navigating that stuff actually feels fun and like a like a step towards something different. It's interesting yeah. how, I, I think even having real depth of field, like having depth changes how you're used to even composition. <laughs> it feels very different in VR than it does on a 2D screen because on a 2D screen, even though you're, you're faking 3D, right? Yeah. And you read things differently on a flat surface than you do in the real world, and you and you focus on different things. So it, it really is interesting to where if, like, you're playing a multiplayer game on a screen like Call of Duty or Halo or something, you're, you're just looking for little quick cues like color, just little bits of things or shape, but in 3D you actually have to lead the player even more to do a depth cue mm. <laughs> of not mm. just like they just scan across they actually have to like look like change their focal oh, right. and stuff and and that's that's kind of a challenge and, and really interesting because it's not a flat surface which is it's totally different like you you know you work on your monitor and everything's feeling great and then you put your headset in and you're like oh yeah well that doesn't read now in, <laughs> in that, 3d <laughs> that, that happens all the yeah. time while we're, while we're making these things like we, we will gather around somebody has the headset yeah. on and we're looking at the flat monitor 
so we can see what's happening mm-hmm. with the game. But inevitably, somebody's like, "Here, you know, look at this." Yep. Like, uh, put, like, put the headset on and actually see it. Also, yeah. read. I mean, they're three D now. They're not just the thing on the screen that it you, like sort of has a limit to where it goes. It's like flying by your eye, and you, you really have to. That can get super distracting, or the effect isn't. Sometimes it's not even as much as you thought it was right. because it's all just layered on a flat screen and on a three D area. It's that's farther out, and you can see the distance between it. It's really interesting. Hmm. Yeah, it's it's a it's a new thing, and um, like like you were saying, I think it it definitely has its its own place in gaming. Um, I still like going home and playing a, a you know a console game, um, but also sometimes I'll I'll hang out and I'll just like climb stuff uh, in <laughs> VR, uh, and like to the top or something like that, or the climb or um, shoot stuff in Robo Recall, and it's just this totally different feeling I get out of it. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's 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 awesome. Um, there are going to be uh, three, three PCs, three winners, three winners today. I see that question in chat. I have um, them right here, but I'm not going to read them just yet. Not yet, because hmm. I'm I a horrible read. person. I, I won't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> like Adam can see him too. Oh, oh yeah. man, that, that's I'm a good sorry. location. Yeah, that everybody's everybody's everybody hates us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, they don't. No. Uh, we'll we'll, t- we'll tell you pretty soon. We won't, we won't take long, right? <laughs> Eventually. <laughs> Eventually. The definition of long? <laughs> um, uh, Thomas, what, like you, uh, you've worked on various communities, like for, for other games, Insomniac games and others. What, what do you think about the VR community? Like how would you compare and contrast it to um, others that you've experienced? Uh, at least for the Unspoken, uh, it's really nice. Uh, it's, everybody's really kind of welcoming and really, uh, like everybody's happy to be there and happy that other people are there and willing to teach uh, that I haven't seen in other communities. That, that's the big thing, willing to teach uh, and explain kind of the ins and outs of the game. Um, they also help us a lot with like feedback and uh, reporting things that happen in the game um, and just really, really cool, really, uh, kind of tight-knit, great community. Um, yeah, at least in my experience in other games, I haven't seen that, that as much. There, sometimes you'll see small pockets of that uh, in, in other other PC games, which is what I, I've done um, a bit of, but uh, it's not as widespread as I've seen in VR. Um, it's true, you get I the think, sense that everybody's trying to help bring people to VR. Everybody wants to see more and more players joining up. I mean, yep. the, the developer community feels a little like that as well. Like everybody's helping everybody else mm-hmm. kind of figure things out. And yeah, there's, really, there's really a great lot of about talks sharing. and GDC talks. Yeah. And even just like on like 80 dot level art station, people posting how they figured out how to do something. Yeah. I mean, that's 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 somewhat true in, in all of the development, but definitely true in VR. <laughs> how, how, how has your lighting process changed like step to step? Like do you do, you do something different first now than you would have on a yeah, I mean, the, I think the biggest thing is, like, you have to be, like, I, I have become a lot more technically, like, <laughs> inclined than on console where you kind of can just do whatever you want not think about it. Yeah. Um, so I think everything I do, I really try to think out a few steps ahead of what it's going, what cost it's going to have and how it could affect someone else and, and a lot more than on console. So I think that's the first thing. The, the other thing is just kind of like what I was saying was I might... I definitely get in the headset faster. I, I look at that right away right. rather than like light everything, look how it's rendering on the screen and check everything on the screen. I'm like, oh, I need to check this right now, especially with any kind of like particles or atmospheric stuff like that reads very differently. So it's it's not relying on the screen and getting in VR because it just feels totally different. Yeah. So. When, when you're doing like um, like depth mm-hmm. or fog correction, has it has it changed the way you think about that stuff? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it, the one thing that's kind of cool, I think I've kind of, it's one of those things where, like, you get better at one thing, and then you it kind of feeds back in. So I think I kind of understand depth better mm. because I'm seeing it. I'm seeing how it's actually working. So I can even anticipate sometimes more what that's going to do yeah. without, like, beforehand as I'm just setting things up initially, I, I know how that's going to add at a distance and, and things like that. 
So it's it's interesting how that kind of feeds back into your other skills that right. you already had. And you never know exactly where the camera is in a VR game. Like, uh, you know, yeah. if, if it's a cutscene in one of our, yep. let's mm -hmm. say, traditional titles, yep. for lack of a better way of putting it. Like, the, the camera's in that spot, you're right. adjusting for, for depth mm -hmm. and rack focus right. and everything based mm -hmm. on that. And in VR, the player can, you know, walk yeah, on through it because we don't, we don't mean, make it. I think that's a spot. big thing, like, the way we're authoring materials and, and things like that, like, I think about that right up, up front. You always have to think, oh, the player can get their face right <laughs> here, yeah. and how is that going to read, you know, if you have too much noise or something's, you know, like, very, you know, at a certain angle that, you know, we didn't, in a traditional console title, you, you don't have, like, yaw. And yeah, so your, your head is always like this, but it's amazing how, like, when you get, like, here, oh, it looks a certain way, and right. the light reflects a certain way, or a material reads a certain way. So there's, it's it's always like, instead of thinking the camera, it's very much like the player. It, it, like in my head, I, I think of that. Where would I want to go? What what thing what thing would I want to do to try to break? What the yeah. developer expected <laughs> yeah. me to do? What will I want to like go around a corner or look under and things like that? It, yeah. It's it's definitely, uh, uh, you kind of need a more, almost like, I don't know, holistic way of, of designing it. But you have to create a more realized space it's harder to do the smoke and mirror stuff. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you have like film, which is very smoke and mirrors. You have a shot and an angle and you can hide things. Then you have games where you can walk around and then you have VR where I can bend beyond where your tradition. So it's like this, this extra level, it's a little, it's like theater you can walk on like an escape room or something mm -hmm. where you have to take care of everything, yeah. not just, so it's, it's interesting. It makes you really think about space more so that's a cool way yeah. to think of it yeah like that escape room analogy yep yeah um yeah the discord link i think somebody linked it yeah we linked it but it is down at the bottom of the screen over here uh links to our discord uh our twitter facebook youtube all that stuff um we'll be doing the giveaway soon soonish uh not right now somebody says i love thomas's beard <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you need to make sure I read that out loud. <laughs> yeah. Who does this? <laughs> you're, you're like, what catches my eye in this show? Oh, there's my favorite thing anyone's the flattery. ever said. <laughs> yeah. More about me, says Thomas. Uh, that's right. More about my beard. <laughs> oh, man. It's good yeah. stuff. Yep. Um, yeah, it's funny. You're, you're talking about how um, the, player, the player can uh, do a thing that we don't expect mm -hmm. and get really close to an item. It, it just reminded me of Insomniac's very first IT guy ever. He was this awesome, awesome dude. He was very, very, a very tall fellow. But uh, the famous thing he would do, uh, he would he would walk to your desk and look at what you're working on, and he'd fly the camera around. And you know, if you're if you're developing the thing, when you leave the camera and walk away, you choose a beautiful vista. Yes. Like you make it look good. If anybody's walking what, past, whatever I use the restroom, I was like. So yeah, like, sure, right. just in case somebody walks by, they're like, like, oh, what are you? If oh, somebody's wow. walking by, they're going to be like, oh, that looks so <laughs> yeah. good. This guy would do the opposite of that. Like, he would either find the worst thing or he would find the bug. Like, you know, like imagine, uh, you know, like like vertices that were yeah. snapped together or like some horrible collision <laughs> issue. And he'd stick the camera right in that and then walk away. I'm, I'm pretty sure he would go around when we weren't at our desks and just put the camera in horrible, horrible situations on purpose. He was, a really, he was a really nice really guy, good, but also maybe a jerk. No, he was, stuff yeah, that, well. that you're ignoring and just trying to show everybody. That's, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's good like, hey, hey, look at this. Oh, no, he would just do it. He was oh. like total to, total stealth. Um, I don't oh, think he meant anything by maybe, Would he, maybe would he, he live like it. a rose on your desk? Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> <laughs> um, He'd be good, good at QA. That, yeah. that, that, you know what? That's that's a good point. I mean, mm -hmm. you, you like the QA team finds that stuff, and you guys write it up. How how is uh, finding that stuff in VR as opposed to other games? More or less the same, or do you have to look for a totally different set of things? Um, it's it comes with its own challenges. Uh, I'm pretty sure I've only worked in VR for QA, but uh, it's it's definitely has its own unique like 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 we're talking about the different ways you can look at stuff and. You, as a QA person, need to think like that. Like, what what would uh, like every person ever be doing? Would they be over here? Would be over there? Over there? Does this look good? Can I see through? Does this have a back face? Can I see through this um, object? What can I touch? Um, yeah, what can I touch? <laughs> I try to eat everything. Yeah. That doesn't yeah, have anything right. to do with my job. Thomas I don't, I don't eat that. that Thomas's weird thing. Not, yeah, yeah. <laughs> eat everything. 
<laughs> and then we added a, a corn dog to the unspoken, and I was very happy. I think yep. you inspired that corn dog. Um, You're like, well, you know, Thomas has a point. Yeah, you I should think, be able I to eat Casey a thing. I think Casey used that several times as his reasoning why there should be. A Did he really? Yeah, yeah, he's like, Thomas you know, Thomas is going to try to eat it. If, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. if you don't see a bite taken out of it, we've done something horribly <laughs> wrong. Um, something, something. I don't know why I have that compulsion in VR. Uh, I just do. I just want to. <laughs> Um, can I'm, I eat this fireball? I'm impressed that you can share that with everybody. Uh, I feel well, okay about it. It's He's very comfortable. I'm with proud. Guys, so. yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, QAing in v VR is is definitely unique. It's it's a lot of fun uh, too. Like you, um, there's a lot of just kind of investigative uh, figuring it out. Like how did this happen? That's the general QA stuff. Uh, I'm sure it applies to any kind of QA job. Um, but in VR, there's just a lot more angles to look at uh, a problem from. <laughs> Literally. Um, yeah, yeah, for yeah. real, yeah. <laughs> I see a question with a person um, asking if we use uh, Maya or 3D uh, 3DS Max at Insomniac. We're, 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 we're a Maya shop, and we have been for a long time. Um, I can barely remember why, but I, I can say that. <laughs> you just way, stick with it once we, it happens. <laughs> we, 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 we just stuck with it. I mean, probably somebody had a preference way, way back. Um, because I remember kind of a little decision point where we had to decide which we were going to go with. Um, I don't know. I think we just like the flexibility of Maya, the way we can uh, you know, expand its tool set. Um, it's got some really developer, like scripting friendly mm -hmm. Um, Python qualities, right? yeah, right, right, yeah. and uh, gosh, I haven't even kept up with 3ds Max very well. I think they're they're a lot closer than they used to be, but back then, 3ds Max was a lot more like here's the here's the framework you're working in. This is mm -hmm. your set of tools. Now go make a cool model, and it did some things really, really well. Like it has I've, really good modeling tools. Like yeah. I was more into Max before I came here. Like I initially learned Maya, and then everywhere seemed to be doing Max. So yeah. I like really learned Max. And then I came here and got back into Maya. And actually, Maya in the last few years has integrated a lot of Max to modeling tools mm. um, into because they just they do it really well. Right. But yeah. In in the end, it's like whatever works. Yeah. For you. The principles are all the same. So it's just that, where that tool is and yeah. what but what hockey it is kind of a thing. That that's it exactly. Yeah. Like we we don't like hire on that basis because we figure. If somebody's a modeler or using the software, there's like a, a set of skills there that are, you know, artistic mm -hmm. or about the craft. But we we've all fluidly gone back and forth between different software packages. Yeah, and and where there's all so. like how many new software comes all the time, it's, and it, it's kind of like I, I, a lot of people have a software they like, and they just kind of they'll use that or use what they like out of a certain piece of software, and then use something else. I mean, that's definitely how I am. Whatever gets the job done, and yeah. fits with my sensibilities. Yep. Anyway, so that's, that's just right. Yeah. We we used um, Alias Power Animator way way back, and man, that thing was clunky. That was like Unix based. I mean, I, I I guess it was state of the art at the time, but I think back to it, and we were just like placing a vertex and then placing another one, like oh, wow. just basically modeling point to point yeah. with limited tools and. Then we, we had this uh, homebrewed software called Karma, where we would take a level. And, and, and what we think of as a level then for like a Spyro game now, you know, it would, it would fit in sight of someone's nostril. It'd be like a character. In one of our characters. Like like you could, an, yeah, or a hand. It's like a fingernail <laughs> or something like that. Just uh, they, they look so primitive when you look back at them. But, uh, you know, we, we, we'd light it in our own uh, custom editor, which was a modified version of something called Neaton. Although we were never allowed to say that. Like if you ever called it Neaton, you'd have to put a a nickel in Brian Hastings uh, special karma jar. So anyway, things have changed a lot. That's all I'm saying. They've gotten a lot cooler and more sophisticated and hu human beings are a lot more approachable in games now. Back then it was like a- It's like a mi black box. Right? Minecraft, but not on purpose. <laughs> yeah. yeah it's just, a, just a big boxy thing. Sometimes I watch people uh, model stuff and it's just like mesmerizing. It's hmm. like it's like watching people sculpt. Yeah. And, um, there's some really awesome channels on Twitch about that. Uh, mm -hmm. but yeah, uh, we are going to be doing the giveaway here soon. Um, it's about that time. Why don't we Why don't we go over what we're giving away? And then we can Then we can get to it. Sounds what, good to me. What do you think? Um, so yeah, we will be giving away a uh, fully customized built PC, uh, including these specs: a GeForce GTX 1080 Founders Edition, um, an Intel Core i9 seven nine 7900X, uh, a 
Gigabyte X299 uh, Gaming 3 motherboard. Um, 16 gig gigabytes of uh, Corsair Vengeance RGB DDR4 3000 millihertz megahertz uh, RAM. Uh, a Corsair LE200 SSD, a uh, 240 gigabyte, a Western Digital uh, one terabyte, 7200 RPM hard drive, uh, a Thermal Take Tough Power Grand 850 watt power supply, uh, a Flow Ring RGB 2800, 2800 TT Premium Edition. Uh, cooler, a really, really cool Thermaltake Core P3SE case with uh, Windows 10 Home Edition on it. We're going to show a picture of it again. Let's see that again. I just want to look at it. There it is Ooh. in all its majesty. It's it is, it's, it's, it's stunning. Uh, it's a vision of the future. You can see inside of it. It sees inside you. That's oh wow! The whole open case <laughs> thing is, is yeah is crazy. The open case, it just yeah, like I've cool. never seen that before. This I PC wants to know your specs. Seen yeah, something that looked that nice with it open. <laughs> I've seen some pretty gross open case PCs like that. Yeah. Also, one of the unique things about it is that uh, graphics card is mounted sideways um, instead of, I guess, the traditional way. That's it's mounted through a special little mount where you mount it sideways like that. Yeah. Uh, We're building another one for the Smithsonian, just Are to record we? for the future. That's <laughs> that sounds fancy. Yes. Is it time? I think I think it's about time. Am I gonna am I gonna be the person I, who reads? I, we could. There are three you. of us and three names. We could each read a name. What do you think about that? Okay, okay. Uh, I'm cool with that. Do sounds we do a good. drum roll? Can we get yeah. A, if, uh, do we have uh, the means to do a drum roll? Uh, I guess I just do this. <laughs> nice. Maybe uh, we should do a drum roll. Oh, am I go. going first? You can go first. All right, we're gonna go. So, left to right. get ready, everybody. Woo. We're not gonna. We're not gonna make this last any longer. We're about to tell you. After no, no, soon. No. <laughs> After this commercial break. Um, so the first winner is going to be Mitchell McDaniel from Texas. Woo! Congratulations, Mitchell. Mitchell. Woo. Congratulations. Your next winner hails. From Colorado, the yes. mountain, the mountain state, my home state, and it's Sean McNeese. That's Sean McNeese of Colorado. Nice. Yes, Colorado. You won a very, very sweet PC, Adam. All right, the, the final, the final person, hailing from the wonderful state of Nebraska, Court Josiah Hustlers. Studebaker. Josiah Studebaker. Josiah Studebaker. <laughs> Woo! So that's Mitchell McDaniel, Sean McNeese. And Josiah Studebaker, you're our lucky, lucky winners. You're getting a, Congratulations. You're getting a nice PC. <laughs> I know. We're a very little nice jealous, I, but I am very we jealous. are also happy for you to have these wonderful PCs. Um, I believe we'll be contacting you uh, via email um, if you've won, so look out for that email. Uh, yeah. Congratulations again. Congrats. Should we stream some Super Hot? I think, I think that's what's up. Um, Let's do it. Super Hot. Yeah. Let's do it. Are you going to jump in? I'm going to jump. Awesome. I'm going to backflip ninja star. Have you been in, have you been in there before? One time. Okay. Yep. You're 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 in for a treat. I'm not it's, I'm it's, no it's Thomas. It's really fun. It's yeah. so but. fun. It's a, it's a good game. That was our first stream actually we played super hot. Oh yeah. That's yeah. a good one to start out with. It's yeah. fun fun look too. Like a mm -hmm. uh, lot, lot, lot of style. Just, yeah. Uh, you can close your eyes and you see that red and you see the that kind of um, polygonal on purpose look and you just you see it. It's got this identity. It's really winning. Yeah, and it, it's actually a really great game to kind of um, exemplify the, the uniqueness of VR. Because uh, you have the traditional uh, PC game, and then you have the VR version, and they both play fairly differently, similar, but it's just a totally different feel in VR. Um, both of them are really cool. I, I now prefer the VR version, um, just because it has that whole Neo and the Matrix yeah, right? aspect to it, and it's, it's so fun. It, it does feel like it was made for VR, even though it works very well mm -hmm. on the PC as well. It lends itself so well to those bullets flying around your head and like punching dudes and grabbing things. Mm -hmm. So I think oh, we're going to bring on a another person. We're going to bring in Alina. 
And I'm going to skedaddle. When we return, I will not be here. So yes. Bye, everybody. Thanks oh. Thanks for having me on the stream. Thanks for I'll being come back someday. It was a lot Hello. of fun. It's Alina. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Welcome. It was a good conversation. All right, let's jump to the game. All right. Yeah. So we are mid game right now. Mid game. I've never this is where played we, this game. You've never played it. I've never played it. Oh. It looks really interesting. Uh, Alina, by the way, uh, does QA with me. Um, she's been on the stream a couple times, but if you haven't seen her before, this is Alina. Alina, Hi. this is the stream. I'm really jealous right now. <laughs> I want a new PC. Yeah, me too. Yeah. You'll have to buy one. Yeah, I. You know, I was thinking. That I. I don't, I'm not even sure the total value of that. Those PCs, but I'm sure it was. It's way it's more than I have in my bank account yeah, right it is, now. <laughs> it is. Those are some nice, nice machines. Yeah. Uh, and thanks to our sponsors again, by the way, uh, for that giveaway. Nvidia, uh, Intel, Thermaltake, and Corsair for helping us make that possible. Y'all the best. Appreciate you. She is small. I am small. But you know what? As a tester, I've found like short people type bugs. So it's kind of, <laughs> you kind of need me. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> well, I spelled it the same way that you spell it. Small. I do. I do describe myself as small. small. Oh. They did announce the winners. Yeah. Um, I, I can no. go over it again, or you can. Go ahead. Oh, no. I'm bad at names. <laughs> it's uh, Mitchell McDaniel from Texas. Sean McNeese from Colorado, and Josiah Studebaker from Nebraska. Wait, how do you say that last one? Studebaker. Studebaker. I that think. I mean, I could be. That is the coolest last name. I could be messing that up. Uh, but yeah, they won. Uh, if you are a winner, uh, we will be contacting you via email. Um, thank you, everybody who entered. Uh, congratulations to the winners. Uh, it's, that's awesome. <laughs> I'm jealous, but that's awesome. So what's the point of this game? Um, kill red dudes. Kill red dudes. <laughs> Don't die. Yeah. Is there like a plot or is it? It, it, has, red dudes. it has a, yeah, kill red dudes. I mean, what? <laughs> oh, yeah. it has a beginning, middle, and an end. Okay. You, you, first you don't kill red dudes, and then you do kill red dudes, and then the red dudes have died. Um, I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> uh, there is some, a very loose uh, plot, I think, that's kind of like about like, hacking your mind or something, but it's very um, ambiguous at best. Okay. Uh, it's it's more about the experience uh, of, like, like so when he, do you, do you know the kind of gameplay hook? It's uh, that you can go in, like, slow-mo, like, stop time sort of thing? So I should probably just explain yeah, it for everybody anyway. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, but when, when you're standstill, time is nearly frozen. Things still barely move like at a very very slow rate okay. um, and as when you move that's when things at uh, the world moves like the bullets move so when you see the bullets standing still or virtually still that means Adam is frozen in place um, you're, you're way out of the tracking zone it looks like Adam yeah by the way. thank you yep it's good um, to move. and this is definitely a game that you kind of lose your sense of like where you are and just kind of just you're so you're in the game, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's awesome. Thanks for being here, everybody. So, so, so somebody say hello earlier, but now I've lost it. But hello. Hello. <laughs> Can you? Oh yeah, there you go. Is he gonna be stylish? Yeah. And if you're watching him too, like that's a big part of it over oh, okay. here. On, on the, like, you can see he's like he'll move his hands to like just make things move. I can't figure out what to do here. I think you use your uh, telekinesis. Can you? Oh, that's a thing. Uh... Hold down both triggers and point your fists at somebody. Oh, wow! I yeah, I think I started the game later last time, so I didn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is where I. I that whole Okay. This cool. is th that's actually the tutorial. That's all you uh, get for that. Gotcha. But this this is where I I stopped last time. So you so. just made it to the tutorial and then just. Well, <laughs> no. The, so this is this is the the that that thing the TK punch thing. I, I don't know what to call it, but that's a new mechanic. This is like the fourth level, I think, something like that. Yeah, that reminds oh. me more of uh, the Flash. 
that he has that like he can do like tornadoes. You seen that? In his hands. You seen that video of the Flash and Supergirl without yeah. <laughs> without uh, special yes. effects where he's just it's like, wonderful oh, and she's just like oh, yeah, that's great. Like. <laughs> oh, okay. I love that. I haven't watched the show though. Yeah, me neither. I it's a funny clip. I like Arrow. I watched that for like three seasons and then I just quit. Mm. But I couldn't get into Flash. It's like really, really campy. Yeah, I like that character a lot in the comic books, but I, I Barry? just yeah, yeah, um, or just the Flash in general, but, but yeah. Barry, Barry specifically, but the Flash in general. Yeah, I like um, the character, but not so much the show. Yeah, I just I have a hard time watching television. I don't know. I like to watch movies. Get in and out, beginning, middle, and end. <laughs> Done. Yeah. I mean, and that's if they don't have like a sequel, right? Yeah. Yeah, but even then, there's like maybe three movies. I don't know. So it's still generally some, most of the time, sometimes less of a time commitment. Yeah. To, to get get a satisfying conclusion. Um, that's my thing with television. But I know I'm I'm the odd man out there. We're in a golden age of television, and everybody's picking a TV. Yeah. I mean, it, you have so much time to tell a story. I feel like, like, sure, movies can be effective, but there's just something very like cool about TV where you can just like have a story go on as long as you want oh. mm -hmm. you know and not have the boundaries unless you get canceled then that's a problem well that's so that's my other thing is like <laughs> is like they'll they'll like you know we're gonna solve all these problems one day and then they just get canceled <laughs> and, then they don't. and you're just left there just like oh what was lost about again you know um so yeah I, I just want I want I want my stories to be contained, self-contained. Bite-sized. Bite-sized-ish, yeah. I, I like short films, for sure. I love short films. Yeah. Like, there's something really charming about them. I think, yeah, there, there's, like, there's definitely a less is more kind of thing mm -hmm. with, uh, like, uh, movies even. I think some movies are, are really, really long, and then I'm starting to really appreciate shorter movies, um, just because it's... If you can do something compelling in a little amount of time, make me care, and then solve the problem and have it be satisfying, I, I in 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 a short amount of time, I find that really uh, compelling. Personally. Yeah, it's it's kind of like inspiring, almost like. Sure. Yeah. I don't know. I I get what you're saying. Yeah, I see. Adam was trying to use his sling ring. Yes. I don't know anything about Doctor Strange. Oh. I still haven't watched that movie. I, I, I haven't either. I need to watch it. It looks awesome. Yeah, it looks really trippy. I just haven't had the time. What do I need to do to end the giveaway? The giveaway has ended, and Sorry. we have announced the ender, the winners. Apologize, Bradley. But thanks for being here. Yeah, we appreciate it. If y'all have any questions for us about uh, VR, video games. Testing. Anything. <laughs> Why do I always wear this sweatshirt? Why do you always wear that sweatshirt? I love this sweatshirt. It looks comfortable. It is very comfortable. I love it. It's like my favorite piece of clothing right now. <laughs> and it's warm. More than the, the puffy it's, jacket. And it's comfy. Puffy jacket's nice. We should wear the puffy jacket next We've got some really nice insomniac... Uh, what is the word for this stuff? Clothing. Clo <laughs> Clothing. Do you watch Gotham? I do not. I, I don't either. <laughs> I've seen some clips of it. Um, the Joker uh, character looks really interesting to me. Um, but I, I, don't, I don't watch it regularly. No, I haven't started wa watching Gotham. I, I'm big on superheroes, though. Uh, I think I got kind of burnt by Smallville a little bit, and I was just kind of like, ah, eh, superhero shows, I don't know. I didn't like, I, I just don't like Superman, I'm sorry. I, love I don't Superman. like Superman at all. It's okay. It's okay. Not many people do anymore. It's fine. <laughs> You're allowed to be wrong. No, I'm just kidding. You're allowed to be wrong, no. wonderful. No, I'm just kidding. I get it. I get it. But I like him. How is it like to play a VR game? How's it like? Oh man, um, that's a that's a tough question. What's it like to play a VR game? It's like 
I mean, it, it's... Um, people talk about immersion a lot in video games, and it really is probably the most immersive experience that you can have. Yeah. Um, I think people throw that word out uh, kind of willy-nilly, but in VR, it's extremely apt, uh, because it really feels like you're there. Um, like, you, you still understand that, you know, you're fighting these red, red dudes and, you know, no dudes are red, right? It's not tricking you like, oh my god, everybody's a red dude. Right, but you so you still understand you're in a game, but you feel like you're in a game. Yeah. Um, it's like the control that you're actually doing the movement rather than just using a comp, like a controller to move around. Right. That's like what that's what like the touch controllers or motion motion controllers. Yeah. Yeah. Like I really enjoy that I can just you know actually do the movement and just stab red dudes or just axe them. I think um like. A good kind of example of like what it's like to play VR is uh, when you started working here, <laughs> uh, working on uh, Jackson Dig Site and the Unspoken. Yeah. And in that, if you haven't played uh, the Unspoken, um, Jackson Dig Site is this huge dig site level, and eventually uh, the arena escalates and the ground falls out. Um, and there's a you're standing like I don't know like twenty. 30 feet above this huge lava pit as the ground, because the, the ground has fallen fallen out below you. I remember watching you as you first experienced that moment and you have a little bit of a fear of heights. Yeah. And you kind of like almost <laughs> fell down, right? Yeah. Um, uh, so I, I'm comfortable being at the top of a building if there's like a handrail, like something I can hold on to that I know I'm not going to fall off. Um, but the Indian Spoken, you have these pillars and nothing like holding on to you per se. So the first time when um, in Jackson Jackson Dick site when everything like the floor just collapses on the second round, that was scary for me because it yeah. felt like if I walked like stepped a little over I could have fallen, and right. it felt real for some reason I can't explain it. It just felt like I was gonna fall. Um, I did get over it though, which was nice. <laughs> yeah, it, there, there are challenge is unique to that because VR is really tricking your brain in, in a way to, to like like you're in these situations um, and some of the challenges presented by that are is like the one of the big ones is movement in VR um, because like like if you think about playing a, a traditional game you move the, the sticks you you left stick you're going forward backwards strafing left and right turning with the right stick um, if you're doing that in VR with a stick, but your body's not actually moving, a lot of people get, can get uh, a, a sense of motion sickness. Yeah. Um, and that, that is because it, VR is literally tricking your inner ear to like saying like, I'm moving, but I'm not actually, my body's not actually yeah. going anywhere. So, whoa, what's going on? I feel like that's um, the most challenging part. That's one of the challenges, VR. yeah. Um, you also, people get, you, you kind of, some people aren't affected by it by, at all. Uh, some people gain what they call VR legs uh, yeah. over time. Like the more you play VR, uh, the less you experience that. But most most all games are designed around that, um, and that's why you see a lot of games like with teleport or uh, uh, snap turning movement or different different types of move schemes. Um, climbing games are really cool because you're like moving with your hands, and so you kind of have this like sense of like I'm doing it, and so you. you uh, a lot of people can deal with that, um, but yeah, it's a tough thing to explain to people. I think that's that's why the best the best way to answer that question is uh, to go and find a demo yeah. and play a demo, like a Best For Buy sure. or somewhere like that, um, because it, it is really it's hard to communicate verbally. Yeah, <laughs> it sure. really is. Okay. So more questions. Thomas, I've probably mentioned this before, but Megaton Rainfall is definitely a game to get if you like superhero games. Your your invincibility, but you're invincible, but you need to protect Earth from aliens. No loading screens when traveling. Completely open world. Yeah, Jack. Um, we've talked about that before. I'm uh, from Cerro on the Discord, in the Insomniac Discord, and I checked that out. It looks really cool. Um, hopefully, we'll get to it one day. I can't promise anything, um, but. I, I looked into it. I, I did, and I was like, "Oh, that's, that's a cool game. That's a good. That's a good idea." Um, so I appreciate the suggestion. 
Can we announce the winners again? Asked okay. Vince Hunter, 52. Go for it. All right. Mitchell McDaniel from Texas. Sean McNeese from Colorado. And Josiah Studebaker from Nebraska. They were the winners of the giveaways for the, the PCs. Congratulations to them. Yeah. Thank you, <laughs> everybody, for entering. And thank you to our sponsors, NVIDIA, Intel, Thermaltake, and Corsair. You're the best. Playing the scary games with VR would be cool, kind of. We actually <laughs> <laughs> we actually did a stream not too long ago. Um, we played Wilson's Heart. Um, I played it. I got the... Uh, Oh teddy man, bear. <laughs> the teddy bear. Um, it's it's actually really cool because of that whole immersion aspect. Like you feel the darkness and you feel that suspense. Like it feels closer to you. Like you feel in the action, which is good and bad. Cause I I like the jump scares just really got me. Like it, I I'm really looking forward to actually continuing that game because it was a lot of fun. Like I I like scary stuff. So what up, Bart? Thanks for being here. Bart asked me to say, say his name. Bart, name. Oh. <laughs> Can we announce the winners again? Oh, no! <laughs> uh, Can I'll, somebody I'll a, actually... I'll do it one more time at the end of the screen. <laughs> we, like, literally just did that, and I kind of think you're pranking me. I'm suspicious. I'm yeah, suspicious like, of the prank. Are you trolling? <laughs> mm. Thanks for responding. Glad you checked it out. Tim remembers you mentioned it, but I'm not sure if... if he had seen the trailer. Um, I think I mentioned it to him, too. I I'm not sure, though. I'll follow up. We'll see. One day, maybe. I can't make any promises. Though. I mean, it sounds cool. I'd, I'd it, 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 it. It, it legit looks pretty cool. Yeah. Like, I it. haven't seen the trailer, though. Yeah. This is the first time I've heard of this. Um, it kind of, like, reminded me of, like, uh... <laughs> Did you ever <laughs> play the game Destroy All Humans for, like, the PlayStation Oh, my 2? gosh! It kind of reminded me of that. Oh my gosh, that's so old. Oh, oh my gosh, yeah, yeah. that's so old. <laughs> it's, not, it's not that old. It is don't, old. Don't make me feel old. <laughs> uh, We're on the PS4. <laughs> you know, playing PlayStation 1 games. Um, oh, man. Anyway. Um, yeah. It kind of reminded me of the, the flying saucer parts of Destroy All Humans mm -hmm. mixed with just the massive amount of enemies of uh, Earth Defense Force. You know Earth Defense Force? Mm -mm. No. Earth Defense Force. You lost Force. me at the Earth Defense Force. It's like a like massive wave Giant of bugs, of bugs and oh, ants okay. and stuff coming at you. Just but, but like massive waves. Kind of think of like. Oh my gosh! What's that movie? Uh. Oh. Kind of like imagine Dynasty Warriors, but okay. giant bugs, and sci-fi. You you have guns and stuff. Neato. So totally. Different. Gosh, there's a movie that I cannot think of the name, but it's, it's like you you fight alien like. Bugs. <laughs> uh, Starship Troopers. Yes. Is that okay? Starship Troopers. That's that's a fun movie. So what is this? Like you're breaking a uh, high heel. Dance to, to start the. To start. Yeah. Oh, uh, I get it. I get Lena, it. Lena, I get it. Do this. What? I'm wearing, I'm wearing myself out. <laughs> I mean, I can I can jump in. I don't I'm know any of the controllers, but I'm, I'm down. If you want to, it's cool. I can play too. It's, oh. it's up to you, totally. But it's fun. I mean, I okay. recommend you experience it. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so tell me the controls real quick. Um, so it's like typical ground. So we're going to go back to me uh -huh. for a second. And then throw stuff. What up? Yeah, sure. yeah, it's just me. Go get yeah. my... I have nobody to talk to except for you, chat. What should we talk about? How about, okay. I know, I know Bradley's pranking me, but I'm going to announce the winners again, just because I feel bad. I don't want you to think I'm ignoring you, Bradley. Can I move around, like, yeah. in 3D space? Yeah. Um, so the winners, the, the winners again, yes. okay. Mitchell so McDaniel from Texas, Sean McNeese from Colorado, Josiah Studebaker from Nebraska. Congratulations. Thank you to our sponsors, NVIDIA, Intel, Thermaltake, and Corsair. Appreciate you. You're the best. Everybody's the best. Thanks for being here. I love you all. I'm not pranking. Oh, man. You have the worst luck, my friend. It's okay. Oh, no need to apologize. It's fine. Oh, you have kind of the same, uh, what's the word? 
Your head is as small as mine. I am also small. Yes. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna switch back to the game. Right. And we're gonna watch Alina figure out how to play this game. At, on, at the high level. Yeah, in like the middle of the game. Oh no, oh no. do I punch him? Can I punch him? Yeah, you can, punch, you can yeah. totally punch. There you go. Now you're gonna have to start dodging. Oh god. Oof. Okay. Alright. Got it. So time is frozen if you're not moving. Or okay. relatively frozen. Pretty much frozen. Do you watch Gotham? Do you watch Gotham? Have not. No, I haven't either. No. I haven't really gotten into like superhero TV very much. Yeah, I have to say. So. Yeah, same here. Oh. And TV? I'm like totally yeah. like the type of guy who should be into that. Like, yeah, it's one of those things where I'm like, oh, that looks cool. I should watch that. Yeah. I think. But I always end up other things to do. <laughs> Making games is a lot of work. It is. Yeah. Yeah. That. That and other things. So. Oh no! Looks cool though. I don't know quite how I feel about all everybody showing up before, like pre Batman. It's a little, a little strange. But oh, so oh, you're talking like, like, the just, villains, just like, the idea of like of, he before yeah, he became Batman, yeah, he knew who all the here. Penguin was. Kind of. Yeah. I don't know. It's interesting though. Yeah. I like alternate I like think, what if universe stuff. It's cool though. Like I used to watch some small little bit, and at least mm -hmm. that aspect of it. Um, you eventually buy. Like, it, it just kind of creates... Sure. It sets it's, its, its own, own universe. little yeah. thing, yeah, and you just kind of go with it. Um, I think, at least for me, Smallville had its other problems uh, <laughs> than that. But that that part of it, I was hesitant about, and then you just kind of yeah. you go with it. It's okay. It's, it's entertainment. Yep. Ooh. If you, if you need Will to you make start over, you totally can. superhero game someday? Um, I don't know if I can... I, I'm gonna go to what, Tim's. What could we say? What if someone Tim's, else was here? What would he say? Tim's catchphrase. Who knows what the future may hold? Oh boy. Oh boy. Yeah, I like so that. Let's, that's that's a great I answer. I think that's the perfect that non-answer. Almost answer. any in Who any way. Who knows <laughs> what the future may hold? I'm yeah, gonna, I mean we're still we still haven't got our first superhero game out. We're still making Spider-Man. So mm -hmm. let's do that. I'm all for getting that one done. Mm -hmm. Making it awesome. Oh boy. But yeah, if you have any other questions for us about VR, games, games making games, making games, lighting, Adam's Pop a lighter, culture, whatever, anything, <laughs> anything really, art, stuff, whatever, <laughs> anything except for like world politics. Yeah, that's no, yeah. let's not go there. <laughs> Adam, yes, you want to hear a great joke? Do I have a choice? You have a choice. I, I'll, well, I'll tell you. Um, yeah, go ahead. All right. Adam. I'll let you cut loose <gasps> since Tim isn't here. Go ahead. <laughs> I got a lot of them. No. Let's, do, let's start with one and then take it from there. I'm just saving them up. Lands. This is the joke stream now. <laughs> Next six minutes, nothing but terrible jokes. Um, no, what, Adam, what do you call oh. a snake that's 3.14 meters long? A snake. That is it's going to involve pi, but I don't point, know. A snake that is 3.14 meters long. That is a python, Adam. That is a python. <laughs> yes. Wow. Okay, this is really okay. Cool. let's answer questions. Is it hard to make games? It yes. Is. It is, yes. What Do you have a uh, like a specific, like a, anything specific okay. about it that you'd like to know? A, a particular area of what might be hard or something you saw that looked hard or... We can tell you it is. I'll Why say, <laughs> at least my perspective on that question, um, uh, before I got into development to after getting development, mm -hmm. has totally shifted. Mm -hmm. uh, the, a lot of the things you take for granted that you think are simple and easy mm -hmm. are not at all. It's, it turns out um, AI doesn't make the game for you right. and everything you have to make. So. Right. <laughs> and but do e and... Even, yeah. even, <laughs> even just little things like making somebody go up and down a ladder like Joel on our last stream was talking about uh, how how much work went into that in Edge of Nowhere. Yeah. Um, that's something, even until that stream, I, I didn't really realize how much work, and I still don't realize because I'm not actually mm -hmm. programming that. Sure. But it, that is a stuff, little things like that, a lot of time. Um, figuring yeah. out how to make somebody walk smoothly. Figuring out, like, like all, the, all those little things. Uh, so it, it is... It, one thing I've found is, like, a lot of times something you don't think will be hard right. ends up being, like, insanely hard. 
Yeah. Like, let, let's see. Let me think of something out of the like I've spoken. Um, something. We, oh, okay. So the mirror. The mirror oh, yeah. in the the top of the loft where you yeah, look at your. You own have a, you have a vanity mirror where you can see your uh, cosmetic. Uh, that your was like and stuff. a huge thing to pull that off. Um, mm -hmm. For one thing, we we couldn't just have a reflection. We couldn't right. just put a character there and a reflection. Re reflections surface. in general. Are reflections are very hard to hard. get all the work, and they're really hard in VR. Right. And just with like what tools we had at the moment, were even harder. Right. Um, and it was we we ended up building like there's a room back there, in front of you with another character with a duplicate of your character. Right. And then we have to light that differently, render that differently. We have to make the mirror semi-opaque, like right. transparent. There's this whole thing. And then like, I know programming gameplay had a really challenging time because they had to take your inputs and like flip them, but it, it's not like I just invert that. It was, it, was a, it was a really interesting process. Everyone like was pretty happy that we actually got it because it was like one of those like, we should have a mirror. We definitely should have a mirror. Right. And then we all just like, like, how oh, we should have a mirror. How are we going to do that? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I can see that thought process. We should have a yeah. mirror. Oh, we should have a mirror. Oh, you know, we um, need a mirror. Yeah. How are we going to make a mirror? Uh, yeah. Some people might not realize this, but it, in a traditional game, if you see a mirror, generally, uh, I don't want to say always because that's a bad word to use uh, generally, but uh, most of the time, they're rendering the game twice. And if. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> If you're lucky, you could, you could do that, yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying yep. it is, uh, that's why you, a lot of times you see mirrors that are fogged out or don't mm -hmm. non-functioning mirrors, yep. because if you're trying to get a game within a certain frame rate, rendering a game twice, is that's yep. about the most taxing thing you could do, Yeah, uh, right. performance-wise. It is hard to get a, like a, what we call a real-time ah. reflection. It also, mm -hmm. like, it, it might be easy. It depends on, like, sort of how you set up your game and right. all the other priorities you've had leading up to that moment. What are you sure. going to devote your resources to? How are you going to set up your rendering? How are you going to, in general, do that? And in Unspoken, we, like, initially, like, when I came on the project, we were like, no. everything's no. essentially baked in. All of Not the like lighting this. information, it's all pre-done. And then after we started, like, hey, we want to do things like change the lighting, and how it, like, change from day to night, change atmosphere. Mm -hmm. um, and then, like, we want lights to flicker, and so we like I had to we had to like figure out how are we gonna do that? How does all this stuff work? And since the system, a lot of those systems weren't in place or tested, like it was like on the fly, figuring it out, debugging it. Can we afford this? How do we make it work? And then by the time we got to the mirror thing, it was like, oh, this is a totally. We don't. We still don't have that feature. We won't be able to get that in to mm -hmm. do a real time reflection on a mirror. How are we going to do that? So I'm, I'm really happy that we pulled it off. It's, it's pretty cool because it, it feels like you're looking in a mirror, not what it ultimately is, which is, you know, stage dressing. makes it look like it, what we want. It's cool, though. Somebody's asking, does that apply for reflections on a building? Um, yeah, well, it can. Um, yeah. It de again, it depends on the game. It depends on your resources. Um, so, for instance, um, I worked on Forza Motorsport before I came here, and we had it sort of a break. We, we had some things pre-rendered reflections and then very specific things like the car would update, but everything else would be like static. Um, and, and that comes down to just a ton of different things and different games have different ways of doing it and prioritizing. But um, yeah, I mean, a lot of times a building, on average, right. you start off kind of like baking things and mm -hmm. seeing them really like, okay, what do I have to have update? And then you start prioritizing from there if you need it to be reacting in real time or not. It, it is, reflections are hard. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's something you notice right away. Um, the other part is, so everything's reflected. So even if you don't see a reflection, light is bouncing off of it. Um, so something that doesn't have a shiny surface could it will look different if you baked the wrong reflection in. Um, so, and that's something we, that was a challenge on Unspoken. One of the reasons I pushed to get a lot more um, real-time or dynamic lights that were rendering on the fly so we could get better better reflections and everything that would look more like it should. And, and this all kind of goes back to the uh, previous question about is making games hard. Um, like we're barely scratching the surface <laughs> on reflections. Yeah. Right? Like. <laughs> So, I mean, I think that... Yeah, I, I put a lot of people to sleep here talking about... I, about th I think it's shit, super interesting. So. I think chat probably thinks it's super interesting. Yeah. Uh, I just like watching 
smart people be smart. It's you know? uh, one of the things I think that's cool about making games is, you know, I know I mean indie devs and can work in really small teams, and those people are exceedingly brilliant that they can, you know, if they're doing all the art, all the programming. Um, in in AAA, we have a lot of people, and I think one way to be successful in that you need to be successful when you are in AAA development is to rely on other people and. You know, somebody has this skill. Like, I talk to the effects team a lot, and I pull things from them, and they talk to me about how we should get things to render differently, and I talk to the environment, and we all pool our skills and backgrounds and, and try to, like, learn from each other, because you can't know everything on your own. So it's... That, that's something for me, um, just on a kind of personal development level, mm -hmm. has helped me grow a lot mm -hmm. uh, since getting into development. Because I've... Uh, previously, I've tried to do a lot of stuff on my own, mm -hmm. um, very just kind of lone wolf, right. just I'm going to go out there and do it. Um, and then working on a team, especially here in Insomniac, I found out how much better other people make me. Uh, that's not yeah. that's not specific to development, that's just, I guess, me in, in, a, in, a, yeah. in a work environment. You realize, like, but, oh, I can't do, look at how much I can't do, how right. much I need, I must, in other areas of my life also. <laughs> and working with people who finding out people's strengths and weaknesses yeah. and it, it has this I don't know I just find it immensely rewarding um, accomplishing something as a group as opposed to on your own there, there is a when you're on your own there is that kind of like oh, I, I did this yeah uh, as but on a team you have that kind of like shared we we accomplished something like it, it just I don't know I it maybe it's just who I am but I find that much more gratifying I think there's also a, a like a upward curve and the speed at which you can improve in whatever when you are you know getting feedback and helping like working with other people mm -hmm. it's you learn things whether it's you know interpersonal skills or specific development skill or whatnot yep. working with other people that really helps you improve a lot faster than on your own yeah but i think <laughs> we are a little bit over time oh really um yeah that's yeah. so unfair did you enjoy that alina yes i felt so cool <laughs> why don't you come back to the couch uh it's really hot over here, though. It is. It is. It's it's these lights. This lighting. Um, but yeah, uh, that's going to be wrapping up the stream. <laughs> Thank you, Alina, for joining. Yeah. Um, Adam, as well. And Chad, who was here earlier. Uh, I think this went really well. Yeah, yeah. This was, that was fun. This was a good stream. Yeah. It was fun. Congratulations again to our winners. Uh, I'll, I'll shout them out one more time. One last time. One last time. Yep. Uh, Mitchell McDaniel from Texas, Sean McNeese from Colorado, Josiah Studebaker from Nebraska, who won the PCs, uh, the VR-ready PCs. Uh, let's show that one more time, because it is just so pretty. Look at that. Mm, mm -hmm. That is pretty. Thank you to our sponsors, NVIDIA, Thermaltake, Intel, and Corsair for making this possible. Y'all are the best. We appreciate you. Um, we appreciate you too, chat. Thank you for being here. We'll mm -hmm. see you next time. Uh, I'm not sure what's being streamed tomorrow in Burbank, but they'll be streaming something, um, and that'll be a lot of fun. So yep. check that out. We'll be back here in North Carolina on Tuesday. Um, yeah, thanks. See you next Bye. time. Bye. See you guys. Bye.